So the Google Pixel 7 Pro is finally here, but just before its launch, Apple released the powerhouse iPhone 14 Pro Max, both of which introduced brand new and improved chipsets over their predecessors. And today they will both be going head to head in this recently reformatted speed test. The Pixel is rocking Google's latest Tensor G2 chipset. It's still running on five nanometer process node technology. It still has eight cores, but its two main cores are now clocked at 2.85 gigahertz. The iPhone on the other hand is powered by Apple's new A16 Bionic chip. It runs on more efficient four nanometer architecture. And while it still has just six cores, its two main cores are clocked at an insane 3.46 gigahertz. Both phones have LPDDR5 RAM modules, but while the iPhone has just six gigs of RAM, the Pixel has double that at 12 gigs. They have both been updated to their latest available software updates and are both ready to go toe to toe in this extremely detailed speed test. This is Technic and without further ado, let's go. So we're gonna be kickstarting things off with a simple boot to see which one powers on quicker than the other one. The point is allocated toward the 14 Pro Max, picking up its first point, doing it in just under 14 seconds, as opposed to over 40 seconds on the Pixel. Going into the home screen after booting up the phone, the iPhone picks up its second point, doing it a hell of a lot quicker than that of the Pixel. And now we're gonna be testing out the under display, optical under display fingerprint sensor of the Pixel, as opposed to the 3D face unlock on the iPhone. The Pixel wins every single time, and we're looking based on unlock speed, based on the fingerprints and face ID, not the animations. The Pixel was quick at that time, and now testing out 2D face unlock on the Pixel as opposed to 3D face unlock on the iPhone. Looking at the unlock icon, you can see that the Pixel grabs the crown once again there, picking up its second and final point in round one, that being boots and biometrics. So both of them got two points in that round. Now we're checking out the lux meter readings over here so to make sure that they're sitting at the same brightness levels because they're both sitting at 100% and I want the battery drain to be as accurate as possible. The bottom left-hand corner, we do have GoPro footage and the speed over there based on whether we are recording in real time or if I've sped it up through the editing process. I've also measured the attempts at the start after I charge them, I let them cool down in an air conditioned, cooled environment. And now I have left them for a little bit, tested the temperature and will record the temperature at the end once more. The iPhone has picked up its first point after going into the clock app, opening that up quicker. Now it's second point, opening up the calculator app quicker. Now we're gonna do a simple calculation over here to see which one can be quicker. It is extremely close to call over here, so no point was allocated that time round. And now we're gonna be opening up our third system app, that being camera. Going into the camera app over here, here. The iPhone was the clear winner, opening that up a tad bit quicker than the Pixel, flipping it around to the selfie cam. Once again, the iPhone was quicker. Now taking the snap, the iPhone took the snap quicker, but the Pixel saved the photo to gallery quicker, so no point was allocated over there. Going into our first non-system, our first third-party app after photos. First photos, the iPhone opened it up quicker, and the Pixel went into the photo quicker. Surprise, surprise. Now our first third-party app, that being Photoshop Express. Jumping into that one, the iPhone claimed its sixth point over there and going into the photo, picked up its seventh point. Now seven points on the iPhone as opposed to just one point on the Pixel. Now we're gonna be saving them both to gallery over here, obviously with different storage options. We have UFS 3.1 on the Pixel, which actually got the point there as opposed to the iPhone's NVMe storage. Opening up Adobe Premiere Russia, a video editing app on both devices, the Pixel picks up its third point, now narrowing the gap between it and the iPhone. However, going into the project, the iPhone picks up its eighth point. Now we're gonna be exporting this 4 k 25 frames per second clip that I have here in the project and we're gonna be keeping it at the same resolution and the exact same frame rate. We're gonna be hitting export over here and as you can see, the iPhone is quite a bit quicker than the Pixel thanks to its NVMe storage as opposed to the UFS 3.1 storage on the Pixel. Pixel over 16 seconds and the iPhone just over 12 seconds that time around. Now nine points, triple that of the Pixel at three. Now four points on the Pixel, opening up Spotify quicker and going into the actual song on Spotify, the iPhone picks up its 10th points, its first double digit point. Now six points ahead of the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Going into Google Chrome, the Google phone did not snatch that point. This time it was allocated toward the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but doing a simple search within Chrome, the Pixel 7 Pro picks up its fifth point. Now just six points behind that of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Going into 
our first social media app, that being Facebook. There were way too many different variances over there, so no point was allocated, way too close to call. Going into my profile, once again, too close to call with Facebook, so Facebook was pretty much a stalemate for both of these devices. Going into Instagram, however, the Pixel 7 Pro is quicker at opening it up, refreshing it, and even changing to the next photo slash video since Instagram's all about videos these days. And going into my profile this time, the iPhone 14 Pro Max was quicker, now with double the points, 12 on the iPhone, six on the Pixel. Jumping into Twitter, however, the Pixel 7 Pro picks up its seventh point, no pun intended over there. And jumping into our profile, let's see which one's gonna get it. It is the Pixel once again, now with eight points as opposed to the 12. Once again, closing the gap between it and the iPhone, just a four point difference between them. Now just a three point difference since the Pixel 7 Pro opened it up quicker, though the iPhone went into my profile quicker, that being on TikTok. Now jumping into YouTube, can the Google device open up the Google app quicker? And no, it cannot. The iPhone 14 Pro Max picks up its 14th point, no pun intended once more. And hopping onto my channel, however, which one is it gonna be? It is the iPhone. Once again, two for two in Google's YouTube video streaming app. Jumping into Netflix, the Google Pixel 7 Pro picks up its 10th point, its first double digit point, just five points behind the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now just four points behind with 11 points after going into one of the profiles quicker than that of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So 15 points so far on the iPhone as opposed to 11 on the Pixel 7 Pro. Even though the iPhone does have a much stronger chipset on paper and it is more efficient thanks to it being four nanometer as opposed to the five nanometer on the Pixel. And going into our first benchmark, that being Geek Bench, the Pixel 7 Pro opened that up quicker. Now just a three point gap between the two devices, but hitting start on both devices, the iPhone absolutely destroys the Pixel here. A minute and 42 seconds as opposed to almost three minutes on the Pixel 7 Pro. And the scores are just like night and day. The iPhone just knocks the Pixel 7 Pro out of the park when it comes to scores on benchmarks, as you'll see within 3D Mark Wildlife as well, focusing on GPU performance. Going into the app, the iPhone picked up its 17th point. We're gonna be running Wildlife Extreme here since the iPhone just completely destroys everything when it comes to regular wildlife. This is pretty much normal wildlife, but rendering at 4K. The iPhone got 20.2 FPS as opposed to the 10.4 FPS, pretty much double that of the Pixel, and it finished off quicker in a minute six seconds as opposed to a minute and almost 13 seconds on the Pixel device. So, so far 18 points on the iPhone as opposed to 12 points on the Google Pixel. Going into our first game of four over here, we have Subway Surfers. Once again, the iPhone just under three seconds, Pixel just over four seconds. Now 19 points on the iPhone 14 Pro Max as opposed to 12 12 points on the Pixel 7 Pro. Our third last app of the 20 over here. Our third last game that is, that being Asphalt 9. I absolutely adore this game. It looks aesthetically incredible. They both took the exact same amount of time to open up the app, but hitting play on a race and getting to the nitty gritty and trying to get into the action here, you know, the iPhone seems to get the points within this game pretty much every single time against, no matter what Android I pair it up against. So it picked up its 20th points over there as opposed to the 12 points on the Pixel. Huge gap between the two now, eight point difference between these two devices. You do have to remember, however, that the iPhone does cost quite a bit more than the Pixel 7 Pro. The Pixel 7 Pro is very well priced for what you do get. And yes, it has focused. Google have focused more on software and optimizations are showing over here since it doesn't have the hardware. It doesn't quite have the hardware that the iPhone has, but it is keeping up with it. The iPhone did pick up its 21st point opening up Call of Duty Mobile quicker and its 22nd point getting into the game quicker. So once again, the iPhone is quicker. It's not that much quicker, but it is quite a bit more expensive and the Pixel is doing a fantastic job. Google are really optimizing their phone well and I cannot wait to see what happens with the battery results, not to mention an upcoming battery drain test, so stay tuned for that. And in terms of cameras, I have a camera test coming up pretty soon, so stay tuned for that one too. iPhone open up Free Fire quicker than that of the Pixel, now 23 points as opposed to 12 points on the Pixel 7 Pro. That is a 10 point gap between the two. But going into the actual game, is the Pixel gonna have one last cry? And it does, 14 points, snatching the points away from the iPhone there, just a nine point gap between the two devices, wrapping up the speed portion of this video. Now we're gonna be jumping into RAM management and I have made sure that all RAM optimization optimizations have been disabled on the pixels so that none of these apps will be restricted in the background. All of them should be able to stay open. As you can see over there, they are still open in the background. Hopping into this third round, that being focusing on RAM management, we're going in reverse order in a mirrored like fashion since that seems to be the most accurate. Both of them kept Free Fire and Call of Duty Mobile open in the background. Now, while the iPhone has six gigs of RAM, like I mentioned at the start of the video, the pixel has double that at 12. You would expect it to hold 
twice as many apps, but that's not really the case. They are both running on LPDDR5 RAM modules. They've both kept open all apps so far, but they did both kill Asphalt 9 Legends. And going into all the benchmarks, they kept it open as well as Netflix and YouTube. They did both keep them open. The Pixel didn't have to reopen the app, it just needed to kind of refresh my page, but it didn't have to initially open the app again like we've seen when we initially open apps. They've kept everything else open as well, including Google Chrome on both devices. Once again, on Spotify, the Pixel just kicked to home, but all Androids do that. They don't just stay on the song cover, so no issue there. But where the Pixel really falls behind is all the system apps. It killed all the system apps. I did make sure that they're all sets unrestricted in terms of battery, but it even cleared the calculation within Calculator, and it even had to reopen the timer app, the clock app, but it still kept the time running in the background, that being around 17 minutes, which we'll get to when we get to the battery drain. But as of the end of the test, we got to check out those temperatures. So the pixel increased by 7.1 degrees in Celsius, which is not bad, but it's not quite as good as the addition of 5.3 degrees in Celsius on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is fantastic. Now the pixel drained by 4% battery while the iPhone just drained by 2%, but iPhones are known to not drain as much when they're on the 100% mark. So that left us with an 11.6 77 milliamp hour per minute reading on the Pixel as opposed to the 5.09 milliamp hour per minute reading that we saw on the iPhone throughout the test. So when it comes to battery life and temperature, the iPhone still seems to be king, but I can't wait to see what happens with temperature and battery life of both of these devices in my upcoming battery drain test. So total score over here, we have 29 points on the iPhone 14 Pro Max as opposed to just 16 on the Pixel 7 Pro. Now that is a very similar result when I paired the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra up against the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So it'll be really interesting to see how the Pixel stacks up against its other rival, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. When it comes to the first round, boot and biometrics, they were both neck and neck, two points apiece. But when it comes to speed, the iPhone absolutely smoked the Pixel with 23 points, as opposed to a mere 14 points on the Google Pixel 7 Pro. And of course, the iPhone did do better in the RAM management portion of the video, getting four points as opposed to the Pixel's zero points. But that is only because for some weird reason, the Pixel tends to kill its system apps, which is super strange. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of the results of this video, what your thoughts are on both of these differently priced devices. This is Tech Nick and I'll catch you in the next one.